It was the last night of the year. As a velvety blanket of stars draped the moonlit sky, the entire kingdom of Muruda fell into a deep slumber. Men, women and children stumbled sleepily into their beds and escaped into the world of dreams. In the deep silence of the pitch black night, only one sound could be heard again and again and again. Ching, ching, ching. The sound echoed in the little streets and tiny corners of the kingdom and could be traced all the way to the top of the hill where the royal palace stood. It continued through the marble corridors up the carpeted staircase and into the chambers of Raja Domak, the king of Muruda. Raja Domak sat in his treasury with a look of contentment on his face. Across him sat the Raja's mantri with an enormous pile of coins next to him. His nimble fingers were carefully counting the coins one by one. As he counted them, he dropped each coin into a giant chest. That's the last coin, Your Majesty, said the mantri as he dropped the final piece into the large box. I have filled 42 such chests in the treasury. Have all the people made their contribution? asked Raja Domak. Yes, Your Majesty, said the mantri. Excellent, said Raja Dhoma gleefully, satisfied that his coffers were overflowing. It was not that the Raja was a bad king or even a greedy one. It was just that he became very insecure when his treasure house was not full. So even when his kingdom was suffering from drought and famine, he was reluctant to use the money to help his people. Good night then, said the Raja as he happily retired to his bed. But the people of the kingdom were not happy. The riches of Muruda remained confined to the Raja's treasury. The rest of the kingdom could only watch helplessly as their hard-earned savings made their way into the king's treasure chest. The mantri brought the people's complaints to the king. But Raja Dhomak would not listen. We must not be foolish and spend the kingdom's wealth he cried. However, the next day, Raja Dhomak decided to make a visit through his kingdom in disguise. He often did this. It was one of his ways of finding out how his kingdom was faring. His mantri usually accompanied him on this trip. But this year, with his mantri constantly bringing him complaints about his people, the king decided to make the trip on his own. He wanted to find out for himself if what the mantri had reported was true. A little way into a small village, the Raja got off his horse for a drink of water. Suddenly, a buzzing sound filled his ears. Then he felt something fluttering inside his turban. To his horror, the Raja realized that a bee had flown into his turban and was now fluttering about frantically. Try as he might, he could not get his turban off. Raja Domak began jumping up and down and shaking from one side to the other. 